I put a lot of pressure on myself to create the best possible content in the shortest amount of time possible. And I'm not so great with the latter. I have been kind of getting in my own way recently, trying to focus a lot on quality rather than the number of videos that I put out. And I know that there's somewhat of a debate of quality over quantity and vice versa, but I think it's kind of the blend of the two. And so for this video, I decided that I would do a Q and A. I asked for some questions on Instagram and I am going to answer them here just to kind of make things a little easier on myself, switch it up, not really rely too heavily on a script. But I am still Ben Hillman, this is still some slacker stuff, and I am still searching for meaning in digital awareness. If you don't know what that means, you can click the link up here. Watch that video. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this channel, I encourage you to subscribe because the analytics say most people that watch this video are not subscribed. So you can fix that easily. There's a bunch of places you can click to subscribe. Or if you really like these videos and you wanna support this vision, you can contribute to my Patreon. I really appreciate it. It's kind of what I wanna be doing full time, this YouTube channel. And Patreon is really great to help me get there. But without further ado, with that housekeeping out of the way, let's get to the questions. Sourbeak asks, favorite Muppet go? This is a great question. My initial reaction is to choose Cookie Monster uh, because I really like cookies myself and I think I vibe with the message that he preaches and he's awesome and he just like likes cookies and I like cookies. But if it wasn't the Cookie Monster, then I would probably go with the Count because he, he's very, you know what he's about. He's just about counting, that's all he does. And I also like the way that he dresses. At Nick Rusk asks, at Nick Rusk asks, there's so many S's and K's in your username and well, in your real name. Is continuing to pursue AI technology worth it? All right, I'll try and make this as concise as possible. I know that Siri and Alexa and all the AI stuff that we have commercially available right now is fascinating. It's interesting to see what you can do with it. Really just use them right now to set timers or alarms or whatever, I don't really get too into them. But where I have a vested interest is with video editing and using my computer to do work in general. I'm a big fan of macros when I'm editing and, and keyboard shortcuts. And it'd be cool to be able to have something that, you know, I could just say something and it would be done. It, it would be even cooler if I could just think something and that would be done as well. But I don't know if we're quite there yet or if we're headed there. I'm not sure. Also, Nick, congratulations on the new head coaching job. You just posted about it on Instagram. That's super cool. I used to play volleyball with Nick in college at Emerson, and he's a really genuine dude, really cool guy, and hell of a volleyball player. So congratulations, excited to see what you do there. Hopefully things go well and not terrible, as we all hope. Vinny Castellini asks, what type of bear is best? Okay, you probably want me to say black bear because black bear is best. Um, I mean, there, I know there are two schools of thought, really. But the truth is, Ned. Ned is the best bear. Neddy bear. Steve Greggs, when we making a SW fanfic? I assume that SW means Star Wars. You just name them time and place there, brother. I'll show up. Oh, some lightsabers, some blasters. Yeah, let's do it, dude. Snazzy Mustache asks, Beans, it depends. Connor Judge, can you scat? I've scat in most of these videos. Just take a look. Tuka Daniels asked, what is your astrological sign? So I'm a Pisces. I'm actually a double Pisces Capricorn rising. It's a really interesting thing for folks to point to. It, it doesn't tell the whole story of someone, like making an assumption off of something that you know about them, like their astrological sign, is not always the best thing to do. But I think it is, it's is—it's been really helpful for myself to learn about me. Official Trading King and Arthur Miller TV both say hi. Hello. Via Still asks, what is the best mountain you've ever seen? So there's a lot of really pretty mountains around where I live in Pasadena. The Sierra Madre Mountains are beautiful. I love them a lot. But the best mountain that I've ever seen is a very specific mountain that I don't even know the name of. 
in Joshua Tree National Park, or I think it's actually on the outside of Joshua Tree. It's, it's around there. Myself, my dad, my uncle, and my cousin all decided that we were just gonna climb this mountain. And I believe my sister and a couple other family members also came with, but I just remember that we were very determined to get up to the top of this mountain. And Joshua Tree is really cool because there's there wasn't really a trail. We just kind of climbed up the rocks and got to the top of the mountain eventually, forging our own paths. And there's a whole bunch of spiritual and philosophical reasons that I think that's really cool, but it was a just an overall amazing experience. And I still remember how I felt, and that was like probably 10 years ago. Art McQueen asks, Luca or Caruso for MVP? I think it's obvious. No, but in all honesty, probably Luca. Ellenberg B23 asks, how you doing? I'm doing okay. I had a head cold and I'm kind of over that, I think. I don't know, it was weird, I slept wrong. It was, it was a whole thing. I'm making it way worse than it actually was, but I'm doing all right. I hope you're doing well. You just recently celebrated a birthday. Happy birthday to you. Maeve in mass asks, when are you getting a dog? I have a dog currently, his name is Ned. Uh, he is the family dog we got a while ago, back when I was in high school, I think. Um, I also had a dog when I was living in Boston. His name was Doc. Kind of a bummer with that. I had to end up giving Doc up. Um, I had to give him back to the adoption agency that I got him from. Still kind of processing that whole thing. I've been meaning to make a video about it, but as you can probably imagine, it's very tough to talk about and think about. I'm okay now, but still, I guess, processing it a little bit. And I'd love to get a dog when I am living in my own place. I also like to get a cat. I like animals, they're cool. Karanina Lindstrom asks, why is it important to have lots and lots of unstructured time in order to create something that might resemble art? Why slash how is boredom crucial to the process? Okay, the, the weak answer is I think it depends. I think that everyone kind of creates in their own way. However, I will answer for myself and myself alone. I like doing a bunch of different things at once. I don't know if it's good for me or not, but I get distracted very, very easily. But I just kind of like having variety because I get bored very easily, even about things that I absolutely love. Like I love making YouTube videos, but I'm not doing YouTube videos with 100% of my time. There's definitely other time where I need to use the bathroom, eat food, go to the gym, uh, I do freelance work. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I do that isn't YouTube work. Even though YouTube is where I want to be spending most of my time, it doesn't always work out like that. And other than life just happening, I think that unstructured time for creating is important because it allows you to get different perspectives. Actually, based off of a recommendation that you gave me, I recently went to the Broad in Los Angeles and there were paintings and there's sculptures, not type of art that I myself produce. However, I really valued getting that experience and looking at these different creations because it somehow kind of sparked the creative juices for creating my own stuff. I think unstructured time is really important for getting perspective and for allowing also, I know it's kind of the same word, but like different viewpoints of the same thing. But also, just in case this is what you're asking instead, I think when you are working on something like, you know, let's say I'm editing a video for four hours, that is important to not structure it too much and not be like, okay, I'm going to work on the intro of this video from this hour to this hour and the middle from this hour to this hour and the end from this hour to this hour. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how long it's gonna take to create those things. Typically I find that a intro goes much faster for me when I'm working on that thing, like in the, in the sum of the whole time that I'm working on a project. I spend more time on certain things and creating one thing is gonna take a different amount of time than creating a different thing. Hopefully that's enough answer for that. I know that's a very jumbled thing, but yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Alice Ping Viola asks, can unstructured time sometimes be detrimental to the creation of art? I need as little structure as possible. I know that structure does sometimes help. I think that in some cases, a thought or an idea is much like a gas where it fits the container that 
it's in or that it's put in. The structure that I care about when I'm creating something is I need to be in an environment that is friendly to creating. Like right now, there's a leaf blower blowing and I can hear it and it's like kind of affecting my ability to answer this question. I would probably be much better suited if the structure that I was creating in had like soundproofing or, or sound paneling to dull or remove that sound because it can definitely affect my ability to create. So yeah, in that sense, like physical structure, I think not having a physical structure, I'm, I'm taking a very loose interpretation of structure in this case, but that's my thought on it. Thank you to Sourbeak, Nick Rusk, Vinny Castellini, Steve Greggs, Snazzy Mustache, Connor Judge, Tuka Dania's Official Trading King, Arthur Miller TV, Via Still, Art McQueen, Ellenberg B23, Maven Mask, Carnina Lindstrom, and Alice Ping Viola. You guys are awesome for asking those questions. I hope you enjoyed the responses that I had for them. And a super special shout out to Patrick, Ryan, and Robert. Those are my three patrons right now on Patreon. I launched this Patreon just to kind of see what sort of interest I would get. So if you're interested in supporting that yourself, you can click right here. Oh, I missed it right there and subscribe. Well, and sign up to be a patron yourself. It's only $5. There's a whole bunch of goodies and stuff that I have planned. I haven't launched yet, but I do want to give back to the folks that do contribute over there. And if you haven't subscribed either, you should subscribe because like I said in the beginning, most of you are not subscribed. Just sign into your Google account and hit that little button and the bell thing because you'll be notified for every single video that I put out. All right, shameless plugs over. I will see you next time. That's the end of the video. This video is now over. Goodbye.